The Ford Tractor 4 Speed Transmission Assembly. This video is brought to you by Just 8 Ends Ford Tractor Parts and Restoration Service. This video applies to 4 speed transmissions found on Ford tractors from 1948 to 1953. Begin by installing a cotter pin in the drain hole of the clutch compartment. Bend the cotter pin legs to allow manual turning of the cotter pin to keep the drain hole clear of obstruction. The reverse idler gearing is installed first. To assemble the gearing, install two bushings in the reverse idler shaft and then slip the reverse idler gear over the splined shaft in the orientation shown. Slide a thrust washer down the shaft and lock in place with a snap ring inserted in the groove. Follow this with the coupling and then insert the shaft through the bushings. Add the thick thrust washer and then the thin thrust washer. Place the lock ring over the shaft groove. To install the reverse gear assembly, remove the shaft and place the reverse idler in the transmission case between the shaft support boss and case rear panel. Line up the holes in the case and the idler bushings and reinsert the shaft through the case into the reverse idler assembly. Install the reverse gear shifter fork in the orientation shown by placing it over the sliding coupling and then insert the shifter rail through the transmission case and shifter fork. Note the orientation of the shifter rail. A flat is machined in the end of the rail and faces toward the center of the transmission case. Three detents are machined in the side for a ball and spring friction lock. A cone shaped cutout is provided to accept the pointed set screw to lock the rail in place. Install the set screw and lock nut in the shift of fork and rail assembly. A close up view details the reverse idler installation. Install the detent steel ball, spring, gasket and cap in the side of the case to hold the shift of rail in place. The countershaft is installed next. Begin by assembling the countershaft bearing retainer. Press a bearing cup into the retainer followed by a gasket. Mount it to the housing with four bolt and lock washer sets. Build the counter shaft next. Start by sliding the second gear over the shaft, oriented as shown. Slide the coupling and the coupling connector onto the shaft. Slide the fourth gear over the coupling, followed by the counter shaft gear, and then press a bearing on the end of the shaft. Press a bearing on the other shaft end and follow with the PTO clutch hub, flat washer, lock washer and hex bolt. Install the counter shaft assembly by tilting it as shown and lowering it into the housing and through the PTO mating hole as far as possible. Then move the opposite end forward until the bearing seats in the bearing retainer. 
After installation, the counter shaft and reverse idler assemblies are located as shown in this cutaway. The PTO shifter is installed next. First place a shim on the PTO face and mount the PTO to the transmission case with four hex bolt and lock washer sets. Adjust the number and thickness of the shims until there is no end play on the counter shaft. The shaft end play is verified by measuring the torque required to turn the counter shaft. The torque can be measured by inserting the PTO shaft into the PTO shifter, engaging the jaw clutch, and checking the rotation torque with a torque wrench. The torque required to turn the counter shaft should be between 15 to 30 inch pounds. Now install the counter shaft shifter rail and fork. Place the fork on the sliding coupling Slide the rail through the rear of the transmission case with the flat on the rail facing inwards. Lock the fork to the rail with a set screw and lock nut. Install the detent ball, spring, gasket and cap in the side of the case. The main shaft is assembled and installed next. Begin by placing a thrust washer on the shaft and then press on a roller bearing on the end shown. From the other end of the shaft, slide on the first gear, oriented as shown. Follow with the connector and sliding coupling, and the third gear. The second and fourth gears are next, followed by a thrust washer and roller bearing. The main gear assembly is similar to the counter shaft. Tilt the assembly and lower into the housing so the main gear shaft protrudes through the hole in the transmission case rear face. Set the gear assembly on the counter shaft so the main and counter shaft gears line up as shown. Assemble the main shaft bearing retainer and input shaft assembly next. Install an oil seal in the bearing retainer, being certain that the oil seal is facing the proper way. The open end of the seal must face the transmission gears. Install a bearing cup and bearing in the retainer, and then insert the input shaft through the bearing and into the retainer housing. On the opposite end, slide on the clutch release bearing hub and secure with two spring assemblies. Slide the clutch release bearing over the hub, being sure to face the bearing so the ridged edge is facing away from the hub. Place a gasket on the retainer hub and the assembly is complete. Mount the input shaft assembly into the transmission case and secure with four hex bolt and lock washer sets.
Mount the main shaft rear bearing retainer by first pressing in a bearing cup and placing a shim on the retainer face. Mount the bearing retainer to the case with four hex bolt and lock washer sets. Adjust the bearing preload by first ensuring the counter shaft and main shaft are in neutral by positioning the sliding couplings between the gears. Vary the number and thickness of the shims until there is zero end play in the main shaft and the torque required to rotate the main shaft is between 20 to 35 inch pounds. Install the main and reverse shifter plates over the main shaft. The shifter plates are mounted to the transmission case with two shifter pivot and gasket sets. Now install the main shaft, shifter fork and rail. Place the fork over the sliding coupling so the set screw boss is facing as shown. Insert the rail through the housing with the flat cutout facing as shown and lock in place with the set screw and lock nut. The detent ball and spring are placed in a hole at the rear of the transmission case and will be held in place by the gear shift cover. Prior to installing the gear shift assembly, ensure that the sliding couplings for the reverse idler, counter shaft, and main shaft are all in the neutral position. Lay the gear shift gasket on the case and then lower the gear shift assembly on the case. As the gear shift assembly is placed on the gasket, position the stick shift and the shifter plates as shown. The shifter plates are aligned vertically when in neutral position and the stick shift should be centered in the cutouts in both plates. After aligning the stick shift, mount the gear shift assembly with 9 hex bolts. Insert the clutch release shaft bushing into both sides of the case. Then insert the clutch release shaft through a bushing, the clutch actuator fork, and the opposite bushing. Note the orientation of the fork. The curved side of the arms ride on the ears of the clutch release bearing hub. Align the holes in the shaft and the fork and mate the fork to the shaft with a flathead pin. On the left side of the case attach the clutch release shaft arm with a flathead pin. Insert the release arm pin into the arm and insert a brake cross shaft bushing in both sides of the case. Then screw in an eye bolt into the arm pin. On each side of the case install studs into the threaded holes in the boss. Then mount the radius rod spacer and ball cap over the studs and secure with three hex nut and lock washer sets. Install the drain plug and gasket in the bottom of the case and the transmission assembly is now complete. To see more videos from Just 8 Ends, 
Remember to like and subscribe.